<laughs> Why do they have to use such big words for theology? Travis expects us to memorize 80 of these. And it's just hard when they use these big words like soterology and hamtartia and Christology. Pneumatology, eschatology, anthropology. Yeah. Well, they're important to know. It's how everything's categorized. I guess, but they could use simpler words. And some do. You could say the doctrine of salvation, the doctrine of sin, the doctrine of man. But some prefer the terms, like me. And you people are the worst. <laughs> but at least we're making videos about them. Who said anything about we? Hello there, I'm Aiden, and welcome to A Pastor's Life For Me. So, theology definitions. There's a ton of them. And for some people, the ology words are the worst. And it's probably because they're not English. Generally, they're a combination of two Greek words. In our case for today, it's soteriology. It comes from the Greek word soteria, meaning salvation, or more precisely, soter, meaning savior. Then ology comes from the Greek word logos, meaning word or study. So essentially the word soteriology means the study of salvation or the other common way it said, the doctrines of salvation. So there you go. I have to find it for you. That's it for today. Bye bye. Wait just a second. I've explained nothing. Now if you search in a dictionary, that's the definition you're gonna get. But it doesn't really tell you what it is. Sure, it means it's the study of salvation, but what does that entail? Let's grab Hodge for an example. Ah! Oh. So Hodge here has a section on soteriology and it's helpful because there's a huge range to this. Soteriology, plan of salvation, covenant of grace, the person of Christ, the mediatorial work of Christ, prophetic office, priestly office, satisfaction of Christ, for whom did Christ die, theories of the atonement, intercession of Christ, kingly office of Christ, the humiliation of Christ, the exaltation of Christ, vocation. Book two, regeneration, faith, justification, sanctification, the law, the means of grace, the Lord's supper. Those are all the major headings in Hodge's series. Doesn't even include all the minor headings. So as you can see, there's a lot to it. And as you'll see while we define all of these ology words, there's a ton of overlap. Take Wiley's book, for example. This is Wiley's book. If you look at Wiley's theology book, under the section, The Doctrine of the Son, it has the person of Christ, the estates and offices of Christ, which is him being prophet, priest, and king, the atonement, its biblical basis and history, and the atonement, its nature and extent. Grudem here, in his 1200 page book, there is no section labeled soteriology. Why? because it all overlaps into different categories. So how do we explain this? Well, it's actually quite simple. Soteriology, the study of salvation. How can you study salvation apart from the savior? Who is the savior? The doctrines of Christ. How can you study salvation apart from our need for salvation? The doctrines of sin. How can you study salvation apart from the indwelling of the Holy Spirit? the doctrines of the Holy Spirit, etc. All of these categories must overlap. And the only reason we put them into these categories is so that the subjects are easier to find. So what is soteriology? Soteriology is the study of salvation. This includes the plan of the Father, the work of the Son, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Words like propitiation, sanctification, justification, expiation, atonement, redemption, regeneration, and any other words that have to do with salvation fall into this category. The need for salvation because of our sin also falls into this doctrine. 
Anything that has to do with salvation, even remotely, is the part of soteriology. The doctrines of salvation are the answers to why do we need salvation? Who is the savior? How are we saved? What does that entail? Soteriology seeks to answer these questions through the study of what God has told us about salvation in his word. So this is the start, and I'm gonna keep going and going and going until we define all of these ology words. Yes, there's gonna be overlap, but watch the videos anyways because you could learn something, or you need to be reminded of something. We all need the gospel every day. And though you might find theology definitions boring, they are essential in growing your knowledge of the word because all of theology tells us something about us and something about God. And that's why I won't leave the definitions as simply the study of salvation because there's a whole lot more to it. Thanks for watching. Like that like button, subscribe to that subscribe button, and check out another one of our videos. And also, consider supporting us on Patreon. The links for that's in the description. But until next time, remember, know the word, do the word, and share the word. But as always, we do it in love. <laughs>